Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Good morning, good evening, depending where you are in the world. My name is Nikola Beshinovich, and uh, welcome to the 20th uh, version of uh, RAS uh, webinar uh, series. Uh, today, we have uh, a great pleasure to welcome uh, Thomas Schlechte and Thorsten Klug from uh, LBW Optimization, uh, who are and have been uh, working uh, with uh, various uh, companies and institutes uh, in the railway domain uh, all around the world. Uh, they have done some uh, pretty nice uh, developments in terms of uh, rolling stock, uh, timetabling, uh, and uh, now we'll have a chance to hear from them about uh, their recent work together with uh, DBNets, which is uh, the main German infrastructure manager, and they'll be talking about uh, timetable optimization for moving block system. So we use uh, the same uh, pattern as uh, the previous uh, webinars. So we'll have a presentation. Then if you have any questions, feel free to write them in chat uh, during presentation as well, and we'll pick it up uh, after the presentation of uh, Thomas and Thorsten. So with this, I would like to give uh, the floor to Thomas and Thorsten, and uh, uh, we enjoy together the talk. Please. Yeah, thank you very much, Nicola, for the nice uh, words. Uh, so welcome, everybody, to the talk today. So the topic is, as we already heard, um, timetable optimization for moving block systems, which will be hopefully uh, systems of the future. Uh, and uh, to get, together with Thorsten, uh, I will today uh, present uh, what we've done there. And here's a short outline, a uh, short uh, discussion of the, the team. So the team, as we already heard, is with uh, Digitale Schiene Deutschland, uh, the yeah, infrastructure manager uh, and digitization um, um, company who um, owns the network and uh, so it's able to, uh, to operate to it and to, to do the planning for future systems there. So, and uh, together with uh, our uh, colleagues from the Student Institute, um, we uh, started this collaboration and uh, most of the work uh, which we done is written in this paper, which was published uh, this year and was already uh, presented at Ray Beijing. So the outline of the talk is uh, basically, we will speak a little bit about the mission of the uh, project. We'll then uh, formalize the problem and we will uh, show the mathematical model and then Torsten will take over and explain the algorithmic uh, procedure to, to solve these uh, large scale problems and then also show some results and um, the interfacing with uh, Viriato, which is a well-known tool in the railway industry to simulate timetables. And uh, Viato has a, an open platform for algorithms so you can interface uh, your code there. And we did this with, uh, with our timetable optimization module in order to show, uh, the, to have a showcase that you can uh, use these uh, models uh, in order to uh, optimize timetables. Okay, and here's uh, the figure which uh, already shows what it's all about. So it's it's what you can see is the usual train uh, diagram in space and time uh, as a 3D plot where the, the lines uh, uh, are trains uh, and, and uh, where you can see where a train is waiting and where overtaking takes place uh, for a small corridor. So the overall goal of this um, a project uh, a digital rail is uh, to decide, design a new capacity and traffic management uh, system, uh, which is much more than only optimization. And it uh, should be able to uh, create, of course, feasible train timetables. Uh, it should also respect uh, the microscopic layer and all the details which you have to consider in rail timetabling. And of course, uh, the challenge, the new thing was to consider a moving block system where the safety system is completely or is slightly different to, to classical ones. And uh, of course, uh, the trains should uh, uh, also 
have different routes, so you should optimize over the routings and timings of the trains. That's the, the goal, and it should also be on the planning stage as well as on a dispatching disruption stage where you can say um, you have a timetable and you only want to minimize deviation in case of uh, disruptions. So this is the, the main goal to, of Digital Union Deutschland to design these CTMS systems. And uh, the way they want to do it is uh, to use a hybrid approach where you uh, obviously uh, use uh, new and uh, trendy uh, learning techniques like deep reinforcement learning. And this uh, part of the project is done by the company InstaDeep. But as well, also, you need clear mathematical formulations and uh, old school OR techniques to solve these project uh, project problems. And this is uh, what we will speak here about today. So the state of the art in uh, timetable optimization for um, railway, timed, uh, railway uh, problems. And what we uh, basically use as a method is mixed integer programming and uh, sophisticated state-of-the-art branch and cut algorithms to speed up the classical pure MIP approach. And of course, uh, Digital Genius also is interested to build an interface between both approaches and to let, for instance, one of the other be a heuristic of the other and so on, so that you can make use of both approaches. But that's not the topic today. We want to speak today about the mathematical problem, the formulation, and uh, algorithmic approach, and at the end, uh, at, uh, at what is actually uh, possible with it. Okay, so let's take a look at the problem. So a uh, classical European safety system, um, it's clear uh, that uh, you have a successor train who is not allowed to enter a block until uh, the predecessor uh, has released it. So the predecessor has, has to be um, already in the next block and, and also another safety distance has to be um, ensured. And by this um, safety system, uh, safety is ensured. And when you change this from fixed block with signals to moving block where no signals are there anymore, then the trains should run in breaking distance. So it will become uh, completely different because you, you don't have the signals anymore. You have the information where the trains are via uh, other informations. And then uh, you must make sure that, that the successor train is able to break uh, until uh, the position where the predecessor already left. That's, that's basically the idea of moving block. And what this means for the capacity and for the utilization of a network can be found in this paper already 2013. So obviously the idea behind these systems is to have smaller headway times between the train to allow trains, for instance, if they are diverging and the, the slower train has to go right and the faster train to go left to, to be more in touch so that they can uh, make sure make use of these smaller headway times. Okay, the definition is then uh, written here. So trains are operated with breaking distance um, means that uh, this breaking distance of the train must be clear in front of him. So, which means the time when the successor train is at position L must be larger than the time the predecessor is at the breaking point of L um, with respect to the location L. And of obviously with respect to the uh, velocity of the successor, because that basically defines the location where he stops. And of can also imagine to incorporate here also lengths of the train and, and other safety measures. But that's basically what we consider in our work. And here, uh, the easiest way to explain such things is also by pictures, I think. So here you see the classical stairways for the braking curves and for the braking uh, stepwares and um, the blocked uh, intervals. And when you go to moving block, these shapes uh, differ. So they be will become breaking nose. And uh, so you see there's not so much uh, area now blocked and you can uh, put both trains uh, further together. So the headway time um, decreases and hopefully you can put more trains uh, through the infrastructure than 
this fixed block. So this is a realistic example from our data where the headway time was 20 seconds or 30 seconds smaller. Okay, then now to the problem formulation, uh, the mathematical. So we are given an infrastructure graph where we know the, the lengths and also the information what the maximal uh, speed which is there allowed to run. We also have train types where also speed limits and acceleration and deceleration rates are given. Um, then uh, classically a train request or train slot is, is something which corresponds to a train type and to a sequence of stops and stations where you want to start and where, where you want to uh, arrive. So origin destination pass through your infrastructure network basically and also uh, maybe minimum stop times at different intermediate stations and so on. And such stops, uh, uh, okay, that's here what you can see. So they also have uh, some intervals where you want to have uh, the stop taking place. And that's the classical formulation of a train request. And the trajectory then, which uh, is then a, a path through your infrastructure graph, which satisfies all the timings of the request, uh, which met all the, the times and also the, all the, the paths, and uh, which is also valid with respect to the, to the running times. And which is of course a valid train trajectory with respect to acceleration, deceleration and waiting. And this is then the time space trajectory of, of a request. And general train timetabling problem is then to consider all these train requests together. And what we are searching for is a conflict-free um, allocation. And we say that two trajectories are conflict-free if they separated by a fixed kappa. So let's say they have to be separated by 30 seconds at least. And another condition we want to consider in this uh, timetabling problem is the moving block condition that at any time, at any point on the trajectory, we are able to break and come to stop before our uh, predecessor, uh, or the, so that the predecessor is already away and we can stop at a break at each point in time. And of course, this would lead to continuous many points to, to check and to consider and we relax this a little bit. We only want to make sure this at our nodes, which are our support points for the problem and where we uh, really control the model. And, and each of these points, we uh, want to make sure that it's able to, that the moving block distance is uh, breaking distance is ensured. Okay, that is the pure problem formulation. Now let's have a look at the model. So the model, obviously, as I already explained, um, is, is, is very is restricted by the headway times and the headway times are basically depending on the velocities in the moving block system. That's why we decided to have the velocities explicit in our model. So instead of other models where time expansion is done, where you know uh, where your train is in at several time blocks, we skipped uh, this expansion. We, we expanded uh, the velocity so that we are um, able to control which speed at which node has which train. So, and, and know when is the next time where you should break or accelerate. So that's the basically idea of the model. So, so each vertex represents then an event like arrival or departure. It also has a velocity. And uh, this means the trajectories we consider have exactly this velocity at this node. And another thing we then do is uh, we have use running time oracles to, to uh, apply exactly to the setting to span all the possibilities what a train can then do if, if a train has a velocity 80 at some node and so on. And this um, is, I would say, a fuzzy uh, modeling of the complete directory because we only control this directory at the nodes and what's happening between the nodes is somehow 
uh, only uh, defined via intervals, but these intervals, will like, as we can see, uh, are enough. Okay, here's a good slide where we uh, classified our work to former work. So the idea with the velocity expansion was already presented in Xu 2017, and uh, it uh, was a dispatching uh, application, and uh, there was no routing uh, decisions to do, so that there were a little bit easier with, with respect to the handling of the headway times because uh, each train knows where the train will run. In our model, we also consider routing and also the, the possibility to let a train uh, be canceled. So here is now the formalization of how we uh, define our running time. So I also will skip this a little bit. We'll just go through the picture. So these are classical speed curves we assume so that we can uh, then have these, these oracles, which tells us for some edge in our network, what is the minimum running time of train request A uh, with the veloc start velocity of 17 and the end velocity of 100. And then you can obviously consider different speed profiles with acceleration, uh, deceleration, or being at top speed. And all these curves may, might lead to different running times, but in the end, we take the minimum so that we know that is for these speed curves, the minimum running time. And as well, you can also say, sometimes it's good to stay on the track and to be slower so that some other trains can run through it before you. And that's why also maximum running times are important. And we also have their oracles and also the classical speed curve. So you decelerate and then you accelerate again, or you can also come to a stop if it's allowed on an edge to stop and to, to let the train uh, park at some, some side yard and then go on again. And these also will give you possibilities for running times and, and via these oracles, we define the maximum running time. But now uh, coming back to the moving block uh, definition. So here is a easy example. So we have uh, just uh, infrastructure from L to M and we have a pre -C predecessor train and uh, blue and the successor train uh, in red. And we have uh, constant speeds, as you can imagine, if the lines are drawn like this, that's a classical time space diagram. And what we now do to, to find the minimum headway time is uh, we assume at position L that the successor train breaks. So this will give us the position where he comes to, to to full stop. So this is this curve here you've shown. So, and then this is the location B of SL. And then we know this uh, is the, the distance which has to be uh, free and so that it's not allowed to predecessor predecess train to, to enter. And if we would assume this at other, other points as well on the trajectory, we would come up with these lines and with this uh, area here. So this is already an area which, which is blocked by the successor train. And of course, we also have this kappa to have a spacing for all the times. So this is, could, could look like this. So this kappa is maybe smaller than this. And now you can already see uh, if you would push these lines together until they touch, then they, there are three different three points where something can happen. So it's at L, it's at B or at M. And one of, uh, the, one of them is the minimum. And so this one is then the, the value for the headway time. It's more complicated in formula, but it's, it's the classical idea to see what is the blocked area and then to push everything together until it's touched. So that will give you the minimum any type headway time and in moving block setting, this will then lead to these formulas as, as written here. I will not go into detail to this, but of course, if you then uh, consider more complex um, trajectories with acceleration and with deceleration, you have to make sure that, that your headway time um, is large enough for all situations or it's a relaxation. It depends what you want to compute in your timetable. If you want to only make a capacity uh, analysis, then maybe 
the real minimum headway time is okay. But uh, if you want to make some more robust uh, plans, then you maybe you have to take here also a maximum running time to consideration so that your head time is also in all cases feasible. Okay, and that, that's just the, the formulas that if you define these, these headway time via these three cases, then you are ensure that safety in the, in the picture. So now uh, coming back to the model. So basically the graph layer is a microscopic representation of the infrastructure network. This uh, will be processed so that degrees um, of, of two um, will be uh, ignored. So only where really things happened um, are considered. And then these layers uh, is also um, expanded to, to have the complete switching information so that you are not running in wrong directions. And, and the final layer is then to again spend this graph up with the velocity layers, for instance, here with three different velocities. And this is then the, the basic um, construction where we then build up the mathematical model. And what we then do is classical variables, as you would uh, imagine. We use binary variables for the usage of these uh, velocity expanded arcs, which then says, okay, train request A is running through station B with velocity 80, for example. Then uh, we have also variables X, E, uh, which uh, coordinate the order of two requests if they are using H, E. We have um, implicit binary variables U, R, which, which are active if a request is canceled, just for feasibility. Uh, and um, we have continuous variables to model the arrival and departure times um, of each uh, request at the nodes where they can uh, run through. And then the model will become a big disjunctive programming model with, um, yeah, with the following constraints. So the, the classical routing constraints is just that each request is a pass from origin to destination in this velocity graph, um, which, which is constructed. And, and, uh, and of course, uh, one arc has to go to the stops or the stops are, or, or, the, or the train is not, not, canceled, not uh, routed. Then um, the time differences of the uh, variables of arrival and departure times at the nodes must respect the possible running times. So as well, the minimum as, as, as well as also the, the maximum running times and also uh, only in waiting arcs should be allowed to stay time there. Otherwise the times must coincide. So you have to, if you arrive at some time you have also to depart at the same time if the velocity is uh, uh, not, not zero. And uh, other constraints are just that you are, that you expect the stops so that you are, uh, if, if it's required to be in one minute in station C, then the difference between arrival and departure must, must be larger than this. And, and also the other intervals. So that's pretty clear, I guess, and straightforward. And the complicated and uh, interesting part of, and maybe also uh, challenging part of the model is, is, is the part where the headway constraints um, are modeled and where the safety is ensured between two train requests. So, and this is these constructions here. And um, also what's really important for this construction is that we need this binary variable to decide which train goes first so that we can make sure which situation we consider at the moment. And the idea of these uh, disjunctions with, with three terms is, is the following. So we define headway situations on some edge from node V to node uh, W and for two requests R1 and R2 and for um, entering velocity of G for the second train. So in this situation, we fix is then 
that R1 is the first train. So he passes and you use it at E before R2. We also say that R1 is using um, this edge. And this means that one of these velocity um, expanded routing arcs is active. And we say that R2 enters with a velocity of V. This also means that uh, R2 has to uh, be active at some of these velocity arcs respect, with respect to this given velocity G. So and only if these three sums uh, are one, as we can see here in the formula before, only if these three are one, then the sum uh, will, will be, uh, and this big M will, will be neglected and then um, the constraint becomes active. And then what, what's becoming active is just, again, a time difference between two events. In this case, the, the arrival um, of uh, the departure of request one at node V and the arrival of uh, request two at node uh, V and, and, and yeah, at the, the entering node. So and these both events has to make sure that they have a, a, a minimum headway time between them so that uh, uh, there is no conflict when, when, we, when the model chooses exactly these variables. And this will make sure that in, in, in the node V, um, the headway time is restricted. And here's once again, the same with formulas now with figures. So the same situation with velocity 40, uh, one edge from V1 to V2 and two requests. And the green one is the first request and the blue one the second. And what we then have is these velocity expanded graphs. We have these uh, set of arcs which we restrict or set into uh, the action together. And the final constraint, headway constraints will then become that this headway time restricts uh, the time uh, the request two is at V1 uh, with respect to that the request one is at V2. And this um, then couples uh, uh, safety uh, between these events. And um, of course, um, it might be that due to the other acceleration and deceleration, uh, schemes, other points in the network may also be critical or decisive. That's that's a point where the model can maybe extend it in the future, where you can then um, also consider other points where you would add such a, a construction. But uh, that is uh, something which which we didn't do at the moment and which which might be a future topic. Okay, and that's that's the pure construction of the, the model. And now I will give over to Torsten, who will explain how we, we solve these large scale models. Oops. Okay. okay, I will talk about the procedure and the results. So the procedure is, or the, our approach is motivated by two observations. The first is that yeah, the headway constraints, as uh, uh, Thomas already mentioned, are the, the difficult part. So without these constraints, the uh, problem decomposes into single routing problems with, with time windows at the stops. And the second observation is that we don't need all of these happy constraints. We only need a, a small subset of this uh, heavy constraints. So the idea is to start with uh, a relaxed mixed integer program without the happy constraints, and then add step by step all needed uh, headway constraints. So that's uh, depicted here in this flow chart. So we start with uh, the, restrict, uh, the relaxed mixed integer program at the beginning without any headway constraints. And then we use a MIP solver, Gorubi, together with 
this feature of a lazy cut callback. So whenever Groby found a heuristic solution or in the branch and bounce process, it finds the integer feasible solution, it calls this lazy cut callback. And then uh, begins our job here to find, uh, to check this, the headway constraints and uh, find uh, violated headways. And if he uh, can't find any violated headways, then of course this uh, feasible, given integer feasible solution is also feasible for the global problem, so for the whole MIP, and we can return it. And if this is not the case, then we do not only take this single headway we, we found, so this, this violated. Instead, we uh, take all headway constraints at this infrastructure edge for this uh, pair of requests and all speed levels. So it's a whole bunch of headway constraints that guarantee that we, in the next iterations, never come back to this to this arcs and this two requests. So they will be safe in the, the next round. So that uh, we find, so this we call this uh, competitions. So competitions are for us this, this blobs of uh, headway constraints for pairs and uh, single edge uh, infrastructure edge. So if we found this, then we uh, also uh, run a simple repair heuristic to get, uh, uh, to help the, the solver with, uh, yeah, with a heuristic solution and put it back to the solver and then the branch and bound process goes on until it hopefully terminates and returns an, an optimal solution. So how this repair heuristic works, the repair heuristic uh, has as input this feasible solution that we get from this uh, from the solver for the relax mixture program, then the set of uh, violated constraints, and we should here be the a set of requests that uh, have at least one weighted headway in this set of weighted headway requests. And with this, we construct a, a conflict graph. It's here on the right side. So here for, for each of the requests, we have one node and uh, an edge between two nodes if they have a, a headway constraint that is violated a headway constraint set. And of course, we could simply, uh, yeah, in this conflict graph, uh, for we're now looking for a, a stable set because if we have a stable set, then we can simply cancel our, all requests that are not in the stable set, and then this solution is uh, feasible. So of course, we can do this better by uh, taking a maximum stable set. This would be the case if we simply. Uh, add to this uh, uh, use and um, take each isolated node. It's of course uh, element of a stable set, and then uh, um, we take a node if it's not adjacent to. Uh, so we uh, we take at most one node per per edge in a conflict graph. Then we can uh, yeah generate this uh, maximum stable sets. Here we have two examples. With a different cardinality, and we implemented here a greedy algorithm where we simply uh, sort the nodes by its uh, node degree and taking then the node with the lowest degree and put it in a set. Uh, if no adjacent uh, node is already in the set, and then go on with the node with the next lowest degree and go on, and this uh, gives us then. Uh, and really a maximum stable set and would lead to this left-hand side solution here. So this stable set then we can use to simply uh, adjust this uh, given solution in this repair step. So we let the T variables and the X variables uh, untouched. And for all uh, requests uh, that are in the stable set, we simply cancel the train. So we set the y variables, the routing variables to zero, and our uh, select variable here that uh, if it's active, it disables the, uh, the request to one. And all requests that are a stable set are untouched again. Then we can simply check that this gives a, a feasible solution for the whole MIP. So we go one time through all constraints here. So the routing constraints is clear. 
all y's become uh, zero and du become one. So this fulfilled then for the flow conservation is also clear. Both are zero for in the case of uh, a cancel train, it's fulfilled. And otherwise, it's, if it's in, in S, then we take the values from the uh, former feasible solution and this must also be fulfilled. It's clear. So for the minimum maximum running time constraint, it's the same here. On for the first inequality, we only if we set this to zero, then this becomes smaller and it's easily fulfilled. And here, this term is uh, negative because this big M is, uh, is always bigger than any of this uh, uh, running times that we calculate here. So this is a negative term, and we um, set this to zero. We we don't subtract this from M, so this becomes bigger on the right hand side. And this is then also trivially fulfilled. And then if you go on to the stopping constraints, yes, again the same as in the uh, Goody constraints at the beginning, we set this to zero, this to one. So and it's, M is always active. It's okay. And for the headway constraints, here all three of these variables on the right hand side, x and both y variables must be one, that this headway constraints become active. And since we, because of the stable set, one of these y variables is set to zero, this uh, headway constraints become disabled and is therefore fulfilled. So we have here is simply strategy strategy to uh, generate a, um, yeah, a solution for solution process and with this um, um, heuristic solutions we can uh, speed up the solution process and the bound, branch and bound process of growth. So let's take a look how this works. So go to the uh, results. So we have here this our microscopic network. So this is a corridor from Hannover, Selze via Funstorf to, to Minden. We have here this microscopic view of this. And then here, for instance, for uh, Funstorf, uh, the processed network. So in the lower in the bottom is the infrastructure is given. And here is uh, the process is then this this aggregated, so we let out all this signal stuff or Excel counter or uh, anything else that's it's uh, could be a node. So each node in our process graph is uh, a stopping point or a switch. So this and in this real world scenarios we have uh, yeah three types three types of three train tracks. This is one of the high speed trains in Germany. It's the ICE and I see the trains that uh, have, yeah, uh, can go up to 200 kilometers per hour. Uh, regional and local trains with uh, several stops. So the high speed trains are often only passing this corridor or I have at least one stop. Then the regional and local trains are typical commuter trains, so they have to stop multiple times. And we have uh, slow uh, freight trains. Mm -hmm. And from this, we get a 24 hours uh, scenario timetable, 24 hour timetable. And out of that, we generate uh, different scenario test sets. So here, 10 scenarios with 100 requests, five with two, uh, 200 requests, and three with 300 requests. And with up to six speed levels. This uh, depends. Uh, what uh, depends on the train type, how many speed levels uh, requests have. So we have 110, 60, 160, and uh, maximum uh, speed that uh, train type could reach. And here are some statistics of this uh, scenarios. You have the, yeah, the scenario number of scenarios, then number of requests, and then here in, uh, the min max of this for the process nodes for the uh, process graph, then for the, for the routing graph. So they are uh, rather stable because they are only differ in some stopping nodes. So maybe if you have more requests, then you uh, have more uh, stopping, nodes, stopping nodes that cannot be uh, processed. So if no, if no train stops at, at the node, then in this process graph, it will be aggregated and it's not a graph. That's why 
with uh, fewer requests, we have uh, uh, fewer nodes. And of course, the velocity layer here, the velocity graphs increases with the number uh, of requests. That's what you would expect. So what could we solve? So I feel this uh, instance sets again, and here the, the algorithm. So MIP means this is the, the brute force mix into program with all happy constraints as it in advance. Then we have lazy. This is uh, this lazy cut approach without the repair heuristic. And we have lazy and lazy with the repair heuristic. So here the, the columns simply the number of, so it's always averaged over the number of overall instances. And we solve all with uh, Groovy 9.5. 9.51 uh, to optimality with the uh, stated gap here. And yeah, this will be the number of both in count of the, the MIP. And here we see the uh, number of happy constraints. And we can also see that with this lazy uh, approach, we only need, uh, yeah, I think about 2% of the, uh, yeah the overall head race to, to solve this problem to optimality. And we, this is repair heuristic, we, uh, it's even, even less. And of and also the com computation time could be half with the lazy cut approach. And with this repair heuristic, we can uh, even more than half it again. So that's uh, for the 100 uh, request test sets uh, scenarios. It's uh, an average 99 seconds. It's 99 seconds. So for the uh, two other test sets with more requests, I only uh, yeah, in the table it's only the results for the uh, lazy cut approach is repair heuristic. And here we can see that we can uh, solve reasonable instance sizes up to 300 trains in. What is it? Less than uh, two hours. Okay. <clears throat> so by side the figures, it's always nice to have a, a proper visualization to evaluate the quality of the results or uh, recognize incorrect model formulations or uh, bug implementations. So we have here the opportunity to use. Uh, Variato from, from SMR together with this uh, algorithm platform. And so far, uh, okay, we use only, to say, only a, yeah, a small uh, feature set of this. And so far, we use Variato to uh, yeah, define the topology and the predefined timetable. And then we can start relation with our tool to. Uh, yeah, make some kind of uh, conflict uh, uh, resolution or uh, optimize this time table. In a couple of data, we have to still have to pipe uh, yeah, around the, the platform. So this is what I want to show in a short live demo. So where is here? Can you see it? Yes. Yes. Yes, okay, perfect. So this here, Viriato, I have here a, a small example. This is the, well, let's switch back to this picture here. So it's here the, the lower uh, left corner of our, our network. It's here on the left hand side, it's, it's midden. So only with a couple of nodes. So the station is, is much bigger. I've only here for example that we can, it's, uh, you can see anything. And then we have here as an intermediate station, Bückeburg. I use here the, uh, the process graph already. That's not a, the detailed infrastructure graph. It's the process layer in our case here. As I put in here. And then we have go on to another station. It's called uh, Kirchhausen. And you can define in Riyadh, you can define very complex uh, station topologies. 
In our case, I use only here very uh, straightforward topology. So if the node have a name, then it's a, a station or a stop. I would say it's, it's a stop. So this here is the whole station. And if it's not have a description, then it's uh, it's always a switch. You know? That uh, that two tra uh, two tracks come together and go on to one. So it's it's all switches here, and this with the tech are uh, as stopping points. So here it's in Pickleburg we have two, and here in Wien we have uh, several more. <coughs> and also here in Kirchhausen uh, on. Uh, the upper tracks and lower tracks, we have one stopping point. And here is here are two, uh, two tracks. OK, so this is uh, the simple network here. Now let's look at the two small examples. So this is here example A. These are so we have three train types. These are five trains. I use here only these uh, high speed trains, ICE and Regional train. And I define here uh, a high speed train, ICE, that starts at 10 30 30. And that should only pass this. Uh, go on. That should only pass this short corridor here. So it enters the uh, track segment here in Minden at uh, 10 30 30. Yeah. 33 and leave it 1038. No. And the second train, that's this uh, so local train with several stops. That should stop here in, in Minden two times and then in Pickleboot one time and in Kirchhausen one time and have to have a stop time of one minute at each of the stations. Okay, now let's take a look at this uh, the line chart here. Um, that bigger. So, so you can already see here that we have here, a, yeah, they use the same infrastructure element at the same time when they go from uh, Minden to, to Bückeburg. And now the, we can uh, here, oops, that's, uh, that's, yes. Now the magic happens. We can now choose here our example A and run relation that's now here integrated in as a plugin to Iliato. Solve it. Now the de de demonstration effect. No, okay, save mode. Now we have uh, soft, so A. Okay. And then we go back to this line chart here and load the solution. Change it. Now we can see that uh, the the city. Uh, Express starts a little bit later here at Minden, 10.30, and then uh, switch the track and overtake the, uh, the, the regional train. Now we can also see this in this uh, network view. If we example A, if you the two trains of the yeah. so all happens here in, in Brickleburg. So we have here this is the Intercity Express that uses the upper track. And we have this regional train that must use it must stop here because that's why you use it the, the lower track. And now in the solution. Let's load the solution. So, load. We have the ICE train that comes here in, in the first uh, first trajectory part here. It overtakes uh, the regional train. 
then uh, switch here to, to a lower track because always when you transfer from uh, the upper to the lower track, these uh, parts here uh, most of the time uh, have speed limits of 80, 80 kilometers per hour or 100. So uh, ICE train wants to be go fast. So it's always bad to switch. And this is why the ICE train make here the pre-transfer to the lower track uh, as early as possible and then uses the lower track to speed up and finally yeah, arrives in Kirchhaus. Okay, so that's the one example. So uh, yeah, relation such as conflict. And for the second short example, uh, example B, we have again this uh, this high speed train, the ICA A here as before, and also the, the same regional train. And now we add um, another uh, high speed train that goes now from the left hand side to the from the right hand side to the left. So it starts in Kirchhausen and go to uh, Minden. So let's take a look at whoop, here. Let's take a look at this line chart again of this example. Example B. Now we already see it that here it's a, yeah, the conflict. So from Bückeburg to Münden, all three trains use this, the same infrastructure element. And now again, we can uh, start here. Our, uh, Solver. So for example, B, we want again relation. So solution B. Okay, let's take a look at this line chart and compare it to, the, to our solution here, solution B. Uh, now we can see that uh, there's this, you know, here, the, this is, uh, you know, this is the, the intercity express that goes in the opposite direction. So it start, then it uh, change to the other track, and yeah, that both of these can uh, yeah, uh, and, yeah, they simply use uh, different track elements, and maybe we can use another line chart from. The So the line chart is always from for the path of the selected train. The solution. So here it's a little bit better. So here uh, again, here this uh, as before the ICE train now not overtake at the first. So here is from Winden to Bückeburg in the first scenario, the first example. Uh, the ICE overtakes on the, this first track element from uh, Minden to Bückeburg, and now he overtakes the uh, uh, regional train uh, at the second element from Bückeburg to Kirchhausen. Yeah. Okay, so that's here uh, two small examples to demonstrate that, that it works. Of course, there can be done a lot more to uh, yeah, generate some interesting scenarios or uh, yeah, to analyze such solutions. And then now I have to uh, put in all by hand, so it's not so, so easy to create uh, really huge scenarios because uh, yeah, it's always the case with, with the data and how you get it in the, in the tools. Yeah, okay, that was that I want to show here. 
So here it is. If you are interested in this uh, algorithm platform from SMR, then here at the bottom is this the web address where you find all the information to this platform if you're interested in that maybe you want to try your own algorithm approaches and test it with Veriato. So let's skip this backup slides and come to yet. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you so much, uh, Thorsten. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, we have uh, several questions, uh, but we also have a very limited time. So let me start uh, immediately with the first one, uh, which is uh, pretty practical and uh, it uh, is related to this particular line where you tested the algorithm. Uh, so Hanover Minden line, uh, mm -hmm. how many trains would you able actually to schedule more with a moving block uh, system. H have you done such experiments and uh, could you share some ideas? I would, yeah, the question is, yeah, it's... Uh... <laughs> oh, so we didn't done these experiments. Didn't maybe, this? maybe the digital rail department at DB did these uh, runs, I hope so. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning of the project, uh, in the first year, I think uh, for a small uh, scenario, I think Simon did this, right, with where, where maybe two or three trains in one hour yeah. more was scheduled or so, if I remember correctly. But I think yeah. at that point of time, the data, uh, the breaking curves and the model depth, I would say, was not that, that I would uh, already say that is a, this is the result and the outcome of such a analysis. But now I think the tools are there to do these analysis. And uh, I'm also interested what would be the, the difference, for instance, if you make 10 or 20 velocity levels, is there a significant uh, difference in the capacity then? I mean, we have now here models with six velocity levels, but maybe at some points in the network, eight kilometers is important instead of 10, because you cannot reach 10 at this point, but you can reach eight. And so that's why uh, there are so many uh, experiments which you can do now and, and analyze uh, this, but uh, I don't think that it's, it's really done because the fixed block uh, definition is also not in our, so the, the model at the moment is not able to compare because we don't have any signal information, yeah. the models. So it's not so easy for us to say uh, what would be now the, the real benefit. We did it yeah, exemplary, so we, we but, don't, but yeah, not- We don't have the data for this fixed block. And we don't have the algorithm for this fixed block. Yeah. But of course, DB should have. <laughs> DB they should, should be yeah, able to, have, to, yeah. to do this uh, experiments but, also yeah. with raises and to analyze then what is what is the change of the headway time and what is the change of running trains through this corridor in a two hour block. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, and then maybe a question from uh, uh, Christian Liebchen. Uh, so, uh, Let's go for the worst. first one. How are the trains uh, glued together at midnight if you plan for 24 hours? Is the timetable assumed to repeat the next day? Or... Yeah, no, we simply have, we have single requests. So it's really, yeah, we don't have this uh, a cyclic approach or something like this. Okay. And it's, are those. So it's, those, so it's uh, when it's uh, 24 hours, then it's simply, yeah. Let's go on. So it's, and it's more than uh, then it's yeah it's uh, one for the, one o'clock until the next day. It's okay. Okay. And uh, have you considered the single direction in experiments you're doing, or is it for multiple direction? Do you deal with some interaction between yes. the trees yeah. in opposite directions? We have, we have yeah. both directions, and so, so it's also so that we don't have a preferred direction. So <laughs> by accident, it could be that it's completely the other way around that it's not on the on the right side of the tracks on so the model will choose left side just because uh, the speeds are better on that side or so so it's, yeah, it's, it's, i think it's also a uh, yeah problem today with this with the data that some of this uh, this network there are no data for for the for the opposite track you know? so you have the speed limit for one direction but if you use it in a the same uh, the same track in the other direction you don't have any information if you uh, what is the speed limit so there's some there are some defaults in the data that uh, go down to to zero or to 300 so 
it's uh, it's complicated then to <laughs> to find uh, uh, to fix this. You know? Yes, and maybe the very last one. Looking forward, uh, how do you see this uh, approach uh, that you worked for this uh, one corridor would uh, scale up uh, to a uh, bit bigger regions? That's a good or point. How do you see addressing it? Yeah, I, I think uh, it would uh, scale up, but I think uh, we need to somehow restrict some routings. I mean, we. At the moment, we just say every possible routing is okay, and it's in the corridor. There is not so much routing, but uh, there are a lot of routes anyway because you can switch the track. And and we have seen some uh, stations in between. So I would say the routes from A to B there are already 40, 50 possibilities. So it's and this is something I would um, expect that this is a reasonable size which you can also consider in larger networks. But you have maybe to to filter better which routes are really necessary and which routes are not uh, relevant for some trains. In in this corridor, we didn't do anything clever there. We just take every route which is possible. So and this is already possible to put in Groovy, and it's also possible to speed up the solution process so that you get the optimal solution after minutes, and that's. Uh, Pretty, pretty good, I think, because uh, the real optimal solution is also not so interesting. Maybe it's just uh, if you have a gap from 0.5%, it's also OK. If you know uh, I can run 23 trains in, in, in one hour, then, then it's already OK. And this is achieved very fast with this approach. Yeah, and we, we do not distinguish between you know, the, the train types and uh, in, uh, how we can shift them in the yeah. In this timetable, no. Yeah, so maybe for, example, the, yeah. for yeah, the city expresses or here high speed trains, they are very strict uh, time windows. So we can cannot shift them uh, a quarter of an hour or something like this. Instead of when you have a, a freight train, you can maybe yeah let start one hour later. No? That's maybe uh, that's the, maybe the IC trains are really fixed in this network. Yeah, or like the regional trains, so because you see all these computer trains that are in there, they are very, uh, so the route is more or less fixed. Yeah? It's yeah. very restrictive, uh, so you cannot change so much. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, thank you, Thorsten. Thank you. thank you, everyone, for joining this uh, great uh, presentation of uh, real applications uh, from uh, Rail uh, to well, uh, for, to rail the real world. Uh, this would be the formal end of uh, today's webinar. So we stop here.